oh, we found them, we found them. They've just decided to lie down, everyone. Fantastic, here they are, straight ahead of us. I'm just gonna try reposition three here, hold on. It's a little bit thick. There they are. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> Here we go, Craig. Is that all right for you? Can you see him through there? I'm just luckily, we can get a view past the other vehicle. Ah, oh, there they are. <laughs> They've just decided to lie down now, which is amazing. They've probably been covering a huge distance early in the morning. How many are there? Can you see? Five of them that I can see. Oh, I can actually smell them. They've got a very pungent smell. The wild dogs. Very, very strong smell. Isn't this amazing? How exciting is this, everyone? And luckily, they've decided to lie down. <laughs> this is wonderful. Um, no, <laughs> well, I don't know this pack. It's not a pack that I've seen before. Um, so if any of you have ideas of which pack it is, you can let me know. Um, but it looks like they, they might settle down now for the morning, which is strange because it's still very cool. Uh, so there's a, also a chance that they could get up and start moving around again. Um, but generally, these wild dogs... <laughs> Dumb shock. You said they haven't had their morning coffee yet. Yeah, well, well, they gave us a run around, that's for sure. Um, aren't, they, aren't they amazing? They, they are such unique predators they're so different from obviously the cats that we have around here and these and the, uh, by far by far in my opinion the most exciting predator to follow purely because when they are moving around they are hunting they cover these huge distances i can see there's another um dog approaching in the background you might see there we go there's another one i wonder if this is not the pack of nine yeah, there come another two. So we've got five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see if there's another one. Because I did hear the other day there was a pack of nine that were found. Oh, we might get some interaction here. Let's have a look. Oh, they look like they're in very good condition, these dogs. Very, very beautiful. Now, if we're lucky, these dogs might end up staying here for the day now that they're starting to rest. They might end up staying here and move around a little bit later this afternoon. Not sure if they managed to hunt anything this morning. But they are very, very efficient hunters. And as I said, so exciting to follow because they, they bound and they run very, very quickly. And when they do see prey, they dart off so fast, they are so fast when they are hunting. Rocky and Doreen, you asked what do wild dogs eat? Well, they feed on a variety of food. Now, um, anything from oh, possibly a small scrub here, um, but um, any of the antelope species they prefer. So something from a Stenbock or Dyke all the way up to something the size of a of a kudu. Um, I've seen I've seen wild dog bring down large prey in the Kalahari, in fact, uh, the Oryx and the uh, red hearted beast. I've seen wild dog hunt them before, which is unusual. I couldn't believe it, but they adapt very well to what's around them, what food is around them, what they need to hunt. <laughs> I 
This is awesome. Oh, Chris, now you've, you've asked how far back in history do the wild dogs go? Have they been around for 10,000 years or so? I don't know, Chris. I don't know. Um, I will have to try to find out. I, I don't know if domestic dogs originate from wild dogs um, or the other way around. Uh, I don't know or what, or how far back these canines actually go. Do you know, Craig? <laughs> yeah, that's what I think so. Mr. P all the way in Canada. Now, the wild dogs are, are completely different to domesticated dogs. Um, the wild dogs are pack animals. They run huge distances, cover long distances. They are very powerful um, and incredibly strong jaws, sharp teeth. Um, and ruthless, ruthless hunters when they do hunt. So I do, you know, if if we had to go back, you would probably find that domestic dogs originate from wild dogs. Maybe not necessarily these wild dogs, the species of wild dog, but a wild canine of sorts. And then these are obviously just um, not, well, probably still just have that. Um, that wild aspect to them never been domesticated. I don't think you can domesticate wild dogs because of them being pack animals and needing huge spaces. See those very large ears. Really, really great for listening. Often the wild dog, when they are hunting too, when they're running around, they'll bound through the long grass when they can't see, or they'll stand and try to listen because they'll pick up on the movement of anything. Very, very good eyesight. And it's amazing to see them work together as a pack. Now, Snazzy, the, the wild dog actually make a quite a high-pitched um, squeal or squeak most of the time very strange sound for dogs however their their alarm call if there's any danger or any threat around they do indeed bark um, I've heard that a few times when they see lion or, or if they see a leopard they'll bark and that's an alarm call and then the pack will work together to try and get those predators away Uh, Natalie, you said this is your first sighting of resting wild dogs. You know, usually it's a glimpse of them running and bounding through the bush and then they disappear. So it's wonderful to see them resting. And like I said, now the way they've settled down, it looks as if I don't want to guarantee anything because it is a cool day. But it does look like they may settle down for the day and possibly move around this afternoon again. Luckily we do get out quite early, so maybe... Maybe Taylor will want to try and come and look for them this afternoon. Give her a chance to see them, if they're still here. Shenny, wild dogs, when they are moving around, will sleep anywhere. So just like this pack is doing now, they'll find a spot, they'll rest and they'll sleep. However, when, when they are denning, now winter, so... But uh, May, Ju May, June, they'll start looking for a den site. The, the wild dogs always den in winter. And a den site for wild dogs will be an abandoned termite mound. So something that perhaps a warthog or aardvark has excavated, they'll use that as a, as a den site. And um, the, the, only the alpha male and female will mate. And the female will then go and dig out the den and use that to give birth to the pups and then what will happen is she will sleep in there the other dogs will sleep around the den they won't go in but they will return back to that den daily so they take food for the female 
So that will be used in the winter months, so June, July. Um, and then as soon as those pups reach about three months, three, three, three to four months, um, or about three months, actually a bit sooner, about two to three months, those pups will start moving around um, with the pack and then they'll leave that den and then what happens is the pups will, might hang back a bit when the dogs do go off and hunt and they'll race up for hunt and as soon as they kill something the pups will catch up and they'll feed on um, on whatever the, the pack has caught. However, when they are denning, this pack will hunt, feed and return back to the den and then they will regurgitate food for for the rest of the um, or for the pups and for the um, for the female that is looking after the pups. So yeah, there. I'm trying to think. Um, I know. I don't know if this pack has is has been denning. Um, I assume there would be at this time of year. And uh, like I said, I just don't know how many how many dogs are in this pack. But there, there I saw a pack recently in um, in the Kalahari that were denning. Uh, okay, Chris Rogue, apparently this is known as the Investec pack, thank you. So you say this is the Investec pack, I'm not sure how many dogs are in there, in this pack, but um, they're possibly denning somewhere at the moment, and... Because I know there's that other pack that, um, I think there were only three dogs that we used to see, that would, were sometimes seen, but they were further, further um, west of here. But um, as I was saying, there was a pack that I saw in the Kalahari recently, and they were denning, and those pups have just been brought out of the den. So um, if this pack is denning, if we go on the timeline, I would say the pups will probably still be in the den this time of the year. Not old enough to move around just yet. All right, there's a hyena approaching next to us. Look at that. Now, it'll be interesting to see how these dogs react. Now, let's have a look. They may get up and chase this hyena away. Let's watch. And let's also hear, maybe we get an alarm call from this from the wild dog. I uh, see they're not too phased. Oh, hang on, there we go. Now wild dog don't really like hyena very much. So if that hyena starts moving closer, the wild dogs might react. There's no danger towards these wild dog from the hyena. That is why they're not phased. This hyena is just opportunistic, trying to see if there's potential food around. This is wonderful. Really is great. See, and hyena's just, <laughs> just gonna lie down there now. I must be honest, I'm I'm actually quite relieved these dogs aren't running around because to keep up with them is really, really difficult. Colton, no. Hyena and wild dogs aren't related. Um, hyena fall under a completely different uh, family, Hyena Day. And obviously the wild dogs fall under Cana Day, uh, under canines. So completely different, not related.
every now and then the, the breeze shifts slightly and I can smell these dogs that are very very pungent that wet dog smell I suppose the best way to describe them but such a distinct smell You see, they, even though they're resting, they're still constantly alert and aware of what's going on around them. Lift their heads up, um, ears. See those ears constantly moving. We'll just lift their heads up, scan, make sure there's no potential danger. Joshua, you say you just love those ears. They are, but they're beautiful animals, the wild dogs. That brown, black, and white coloration. Seems as if everything's settled down now. So I don't think these dogs are going to get up and move anytime soon. Which is great for us if they stay till the afternoon. Um, David, we, we're not that far from the hyena den. Um, but it's probably, I would say, as the crow flies, it's probably about six to eight hundred meters or so directly through the bush, roughly. So, yeah, I suppose we're not that far from it, but maybe even a little bit further. But we are, I suppose, in that area. Alright, I'll sit with these dogs for a little bit longer, let's just see if they move, but let's head back to Taylor and find out how the rest of her morning's going.